Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Panda family. In this video, I'll explain you phase lock loop in complete details. Before I start with explanation, let me show you how many things that I'm going to cover in this video. See, first of all, I'll explain you basics of phase lock loop. After that, I'll explain you block diagram of phase lock loop. And with this block diagram, I'll explain you working of phase lock loop. After that, I'll be explaining you essential parameters of phase lock loop. And at last, I'll be discussing about applications of phase lock loop. So there are varieties of applications that I'll be discussing here in this video. Let us begin this session with first agenda that is basics of phase lock loop. Phase lock loop is used to generate clock signal for digital circuits and phase lock loop is used to generate sinusoidal waveforms in analog circuits. Basic agenda of phase lock loop is to provide timing synchronization. In digital circuits, phase lock loop provides bit synchronization, while in analog circuit, phase lock loop provides phase synchronization. So basically phase lock loop generates waveform. For digital, it will be generating square wave means clock signal where agenda is to provide bit synchronization. In analog circuits, phase lock loop is used to generate carrier waves which will be sinusoidal wave where agenda is to provide phase synchronization. Right. So basically for timing synchronization, we use phase lock loop where it is used to lock the phase and frequency of input signal. For example, here we have input signal that is sinusoidal waveform. Then at output side, frequency should be equals to input frequency and at output side, there should be zero phase with respect to input or there should be constant phase difference with respect to input. As if frequency and phase that is getting lock over here, then constant signal that is getting generated over here for digital there will be clock signal over here and for analog there will be constant phase with respect to input or zero phase difference with respect to input. Means phase lock loop is used to provide timing synchronization. It is very essential to have timing synchronization otherwise one cannot identify signals property. Right. For example, if you receive one signal by your mobile wireless signal, right? At that time, if timing synchronization is not there, then you cannot extract original information. So first task that is to provide timing synchronization with received signal and that one can have with, with the use of phase lock loop, right? So in digital, we provide bit synchronization in analog, we provide phase synchronization over here, right? Let us see the block diagram over here. See here we have input reference signal and based on input reference signal, it will be generating output over here. There are three major blocks with phase lock loop. First block is there based on phase detector. So phase detector that is taking two inputs. One is input of input reference signal and second is feedback of VCO over here. So whatever output frequency that is generated over here that is given in feedback over here. So phase detector that is simply multiplier that one can say. See what will happen because of phase detector. And if I say my input signal that is sine of F in and as if I say my output signal that is sine of F out then phase detector that is simply multiplying these two signal. After multiplication, here we will be having error signal. But obviously after multiplication, this signal will be half of sine of f in minus f out plus half of sine of f in plus f out, right? So this is what error signal that is generated by phase detector that is simply multiplying these two signals. Now this error signal that is given to low pass filter. 
so but obviously low pass filter will be allowing only low frequency to pass through it our agenda is not our agenda is to have f out is equals to f in so low pass filter that will not allow high frequency components so this is high frequency component and this high frequency component that is eliminated by low pass filter so output of low pass filter that is having low frequency component only that is this right and based on low frequency component here voltage will be given and that voltage is given to vco and based on error voltage over here vco will be correcting frequency at output side so f out frequency that is happening based on error voltage so here if error voltage is positive in that case vco that will be incrementing frequency over here and it can be adjusted till f out is equals to f in if f out is equals to f in in that case output of low pass filter that will be having sign of f in minus f out where this component that will get zero at that time error voltage will become zero right so voltage control oscillator that is generating oscillating frequency over here which is there in phase with input signal over here right so the phase detector is comparing output frequency with input signal and it is generating error signal as per multiplier after that we pass that signal through low pass filter where high frequency components are eliminated and we will be having error voltage which will be given to voltage control oscillator and based on voltage voltage control oscillator will be generating output frequency and here output frequency that is getting locked as and when f out is equals to f in and as if phase difference of output and input is zero then you can say your signal at output side over here that is in there in sync with input signal right so that is how working is there now let us talk about parameters of phase lock loop see there are two essential parameters that you need to understand over here first is capture range capture range is the range of input frequencies around vco center frequency so capture range that is a range of input frequencies around vco center frequency vco center frequency is f not capture range is range of input frequencies around vco center frequencies onto which the loop can get locked when starting from unlock condition means initially your pll is unlocked right whenever you initiate your circuit but obviously f out and f in both are different our agenda is to have f out is equals to f in and difference in phase that should be zero or constant that is what our goal but that is only possible as if f in that is there in capture range right so f in that should be there in capture range to get locked otherwise that is not possible to have lock now let us assume f in is there in the range of capture range then what will happen let us say f in is over here let us say f in is over here right and initially and initially here we have f out right so what will happen vco that will be tuning frequency towards f in why it is tuning frequency towards f in the reason is input signal that is there in capture range right so from f not this frequency is going towards f in right and once both frequencies are equal once both frequencies are equal and as if phase difference is zero then there will be lock condition over here right but as if this f in that is not there in capture range then initially lock is not possible right now let us talk about lock range see lock range that will come into the picture after lock condition so first of all input frequency that should be there in capture range after that there will be lock once lock is there after that now lock range will come into the picture so in lock range what will happen is here here you will be observing there is a possibility that input frequency may change 
like as if input frequency is changing over here right and previously that lock frequency that was over here so what will happen this lock frequency now that will be going towards f in right and that is possible only f in is there in lock range right as if f in that goes beyond lock range then there is no possibility of tuning of f out with f in right so that is how lock range is there so initially there will be capture capture range as if input frequency is there in capture range then vco can get tuned with f in once there is a lock then lock range will come into the picture and after lock that is always possible that f in may change means input frequency may change and as if input frequency is there within lock range then vco will get tuned to input frequency but as if input frequency is going beyond lock range then output cannot get tuned with input that is how ranges are there right now for further uh, lock condition if f in is going beyond lock range then again capture range will come into the picture so to get locked f in should come inside capture range then only there is a possibility of lock right now let us talk about applications of pll see there are so many applications i have told you we use it in analog circuits as well as digital circuits in digital circuits we use it for clock signal generation in analog circuits we use it for carrier signal generation in both we are having agenda of timing synchronization in digital circuits we want bit synchronization in analog circuits we want phase synchronization over here right and based on that there are so many applications like in communication for synchronization and demodulation circuits we use it like in fm demodulation we use pll in frequency shifting also we use pll see one more application that is mentioned here in clock recovery we use it like you see here we have input bit stream now as per input bit stream 01010 that is happening over here so to extract information at receiver side we need to synchronize this signal right for that we need to generate clock signal that is what possible with the use of phase lock loop right so based on input bit stream it will be generating output clock over here right see one can use it for jitter and noise reduction see jitter is what jitter is there for phase correction right so as if there is a difference in phase in digital signal that is jitter and noise is what that is random signal added with original signal so if you have jitter if you have noise added with the signal then also you one can generate ideal clock with the use of phase lock loop in frequency synthesizer and tone generation also we use phase lock loop right see in frequency synthesizer you can have multiplication of clock over here like if you observe here we have f in that is the frequency right now if you wanted to have 2f in of frequency at output side that is also possible with the use of phase lock loop in microprocessor clock distribution in microcontroller clock distribution also we use pll why that is required the reason is in microprocessor see there are so many blocks and those blocks are functioning along with synchronization so here bit synchronization that is very essential so here if you observe here we are having clock generation from here and same clock that we are distributing to so many blocks all the blocks should function with synchronization and to provide synchronization we are using phase lock loop inside microprocessor circuits right so there are so many applications with pll i hope you have understood this still if anything that you would like to share please note it down in comment section i'll be happy to help you thank you so much for watching this video